on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. I'm very confident that there will be people in the audience who are just getting started, maybe they've got a book or a couple of books, and when we do it again next year, they'll be they'll be on yeah. stage, you know. And that, we'll, that could be you. Could be you, yeah, exactly. It won't be you. <laughs> it won't be me. It might be me. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers. No more barriers. No one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome. It's The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. I've got a new lower camera angle. I'm going to look into the camera. People always say, I don't look into the camera. Look into the camera, James. Look into the camera, not into my eyes. Look into the camera. How's that? Uh, it this, looks creepy to you because I'm looking creepy to you. me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, look, here we go. It's only for people watching on YouTube if you're listening and jogging and doing whatever five, you do. Five people. That's five people. No, no, it's not. That's a thousand. Few. We have a few thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. We are going to be talking about conferences. I will talk about our conference, making some announcements about who's coming uh, today. But I think we'll also, Mark, we can just talk about conference season and the different ones that are on offer and uh, reasons for going and, and best uh, best approach. That's going to be the focus of this podcast episode. But before we start, I do need to announce that we have a winner from our Patreon supporters who we welcome in every week. One of the uh, benefits of being a Patreon supporter, I think at a certain level, I think silver uh, level onwards, is that you uh, go into a draw to win our courses. And uh, a name has been drawn out to win the 101 course, uh, free of charge, that's uh, $600 worth of course. And that is Bill Duncan. Uh, Bill was chosen out of the hat randomly, uh, but I was delighted to see his name come out. I met Bill and Catherine in uh, 20 books, I think probably 2019, something like that. And we sort of follow each other on social media a bit. Bill's a good cyclist over there in Australia. Uh, lovely people, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So Bill Duncan has won uh, Self-Publishing 101. And don't forget, you could be in the hat for the next draw uh, for 101 and ads for authors uh, later on in the summer, if you go to self, if you go to patreon.com forward slash self publishing show and become a Patreon supporter at silver or gold level. Good. Okay, Marcus, I know there's lots going on in everybody's world at the moment, but we are going to focus our minds on June. God, I can't believe it's so soon because it's May now. It's next month. Yes, it's, it's next month, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit worrying. Which is worrying, yeah. So next month, we are holding a two-day conference uh, in London on self-publishing. Uh, it's going to be an opportunity for people to learn, to be inspired, uh, and probably most of all, and I think this goes across all the conferences you go to, to meet other people in the same boat as you, which is a huge help in life. Mark, you've been working on the schedule uh, at of our conference. Um, I should just say the logistics of it. It's going to be in a, a perfect position on the South Bank in London. It's called the arty part of London. Um, South Bank of the River Thames. You can walk across the river. You're, you're in Westminster and Covent Garden and, uh, and so on and so ho. Uh, we will have a social in the evening as well, but there's a gazillion pubs and restaurants uh, where we are. It's a great little part of London to be in. Uh, we're very excited about it. There's lots of hotels as well, probably I would imagine quite good value now because we're still so COVID-y in terms of people making plans. And I think it's likely we're going to have 600-ish there, we think, this year. Uh, we'll top that out soon and close off tickets. So last chance probably to buy tickets next few weeks, which is uh, selfpublishingformula.com forward slash SPS live. Mark, who are we going to hear from? Um, well, so, yeah, it's pretty much confirmed now. So I've been working on this for... A month or two, and it is, it's been you know fairly straightforward to do. Really, um, everyone I asked to speak has been able to, which is great. So, um, so it's two days this time. The last one we did was one day, and we felt that well, it'd be very easy to do two days of content. I could very easily do three days of content, but so I wanted to do a bit more in terms of um, uh, longer, longer sessions. Well, the same ses session length, but more speakers for people to listen to and learn from, and hopefully enjoy. So, um, we're going to start on the twenty uh, eighth. So that's the Wednesday, Tuesday. Is it Tuesday, Wednesday? I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday. Oh, we'll check. Check. We should know that, shouldn't we? Oh, well, like, we will be there on the right day. What day is it? I'm like, I think it's a, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. it's Tuesday the twenty eighth is the first day. So, um, 
what usually happens is we we'll, I think we open up about eight thirty, um, and the the actual halls open a bit after that. So people will start to congregate um, congregate in the uh, the foyer area, and it was pretty buzzy last time. People were kind of um, meeting people that they met online, perhaps they're saying that they're going to meet up at the conference. Um, our crack team of um, volunteers, ably the, the marshaled, shirts. yeah, the yellow shirts, ably marshaled by Catherine. Uh, we're taking registrations and giving out lanyards and and bits and pieces like that. And there will also be some uh, some booths in the uh, entrance area that will be um, staffed by representatives from uh, some, from the sponsors. So there will probably be someone from Amazon. Or the Amazon will be there. They sponsor the conference. Um, so there will be several Amazonians there. They may have a booth, um, but I know Reedsy, um, Bookbub. Um, you know, lots of sponsors. I think a few more sponsors might come on between now and um, and then. So it'll be a good chance to to meet those guys um, and uh, you know start to make connections. One of the best things about doing a conference like this is that you will you know even for introverts and I'm reasonably introverted at these kinds of events. It is a good chance to meet people and and get contacts that can be really useful in the future. So once that's all done and we've had our cups of coffee and our bagels or whatever and we we go into the hall uh the first event i think uh, this, this is subject to change so we may tweak the kind of running order a little bit but the first speakers i've got on my list here are caroline peckham and suzanne valenti um, who we've um, had on the podcast before are doing obscenely well um at the moment in terms of family books they're selling um really um you know big on tiktok but not just on tiktok they're, they're big and successful um in lots of different ways with their with their books so we are going to have um i think it will be an interview with them so possibly um with with you um or maybe darren hardy from amazon not quite sure yet but there'll be an interview with caroline and suzanne and i've kind of tentatively titled that the new queens of kindle because they are as, as i said they're they'll be in the top let's say the top 20 uh, best-selling authors in the world but it might be they've had an insane last 12 months it's yeah. difficult to look at the um the overall top the charts in the in dot com mm. and dot uk and not see a sprinkling of their books there um yeah and they'll talk about tiktok as well i think they will yeah yeah so they're, they're doing i mean that's i don't want them i don't want people to think they're one-trick ponies because they're not um but they they have they've been successful in lots of different ways but but they have been successful on tiktok so we will um have a chat with them um then uh, the next session, so these are roughly an hour, uh, maybe 50 minutes, something along those lines. We've got Nick Stevenson um, coming along now. Nick is, has been a friend for, um, well, ever since we've been doing SPF, so a good seven seven years or so now. Nick Nick and I have known each other, and, and he's a, you know, Nick's a good guy. Um, he has, uh, he, people may have taken his course. He's got a course called Your First 10,000 Readers. Nick is really good on email. He writes fantastic email copy. Um, not entirely sure what he's going to speak about yet. Um, we're having a chat soon just to work that out. But whatever it is, it will be good. And I don't think Nick's ever done a conference before. So um, I've never met him. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, Nick's <clears> I talk yeah. to Nick all the time and you know, deal with him every month on Affiliate Matters and stuff and, yeah. uh, and webinars. But I've actually never met him. I don't know if he really exists. Be interesting to find out. It's actually me. So you are, it's me, me and a thought. slightly younger version. And you're version. Joe Penn as well, aren't you? <laughs> no, there's only one Joe Penn. Um, which is a very, very neat segue. After a little break, we're going to go into a, a chat with Joe. So Joanna was at our first conference, and um, lots of people were very keen to get their photo with Joe. I mean, she's been doing this for a long time, much longer than me, and um, is you know a really it's part, part of the furniture really when it comes to the self-publishing space. Her podcast is great, has over 600 episodes. She's very well known and she's a really good speaker. So she is going to be doing um, something called the creator economy. So I don't know much more than that, um, but I think her last the last one she did was multiple streams of income for our last conference, which, as I say, went down really well. So this one will be called the creator economy. Um, so I think that's one that people will get lots of... Um, will fill lots of notebooks um, cumulatively when uh, Jo goes through her presentation. Um, after then, um, we're going to have uh, probably a little chat between me and you because you've insisted that I have to do something I don't really want to this year. But um, anyway, I probably will. It's a bit weird that if we don't do something, well, together, yeah, we are going to we are definitely going to do something. And um, and I think because the greatest part of, of the show is the 
is the banter at the beginning. That's what we'll do a session, just of trivial banter, so that somebody can stand up and say, when does the interview start? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we'll we'll do something. I'm not quite sure what that will be yet, but um, then there'll be a break for lunch. Um, so uh, an hour to wander along the South Bank. Um, and as you said, there's, there's tons of nice restaurants down there. And also this will be summertime in London. So we last time we had it in March, so it wasn't... I think it was a reasonably nice day, actually, wasn't it? It, was, it wasn't unpleasant. Although, was it raining in I the evening? I think it was cold. I it think it rained was cold. in the evening and on, yeah, on the boat. It wasn't. It was March, you know. So. Yeah. So, anyway, this is June. So, we should... Late June. So, it should be quite nice. So, um, a good chance to have a walk along the South Bank, which is very nice. Um, when we get back, the next session um, is going to be with Stuart Baish. Um, and Stuart, again, I'm chatting with Stuart at the moment. So Stuart is a, you know, my cover designer, cover designer of lots and lots of indies, very well known um, designer these days, has a company called Books Covered um, and um, you know, works with me and you on Fuse. So you know, Stuart's been uh, doing this for ages as well. So he, he is going to be doing, um, at the moment I'm, I'm calling it covers from start to finish. So the plan at the moment is to um, get one or maybe two authors from the audience with covers that they don't think are any good. Um, and basically, Stuart in, this is a very English, 19, late 1970s rest, reference, uh, to, in Tony Hart style, to, um, mm. or even Rolf Harris, I should, <laughs> uh, Rolf no. Harris style. But, uh, Stuart might... Fortunately, he's been to prison for... Yeah, um, that's the, the only similarity between Stuart and Rolf Harris is that they, they're both, you know, good at art. Actually, I'm not even sure Rolf Harris is very good at art, but um, uh, Stuart was will good be... At We'll be taking a cover um, and basically um, one or two covers and we'll, we'll create covers from start to finish. So we'll, we'll watch his screen um, on the big screen at the South Bank Centre as Stuart goes through um, the, the process of actually creating a cover live. So we'll look at some, uh, I suspect he might look at um, how to work out what kind of tropes that should be included on the cover. Um, and uh, he'll do some image research, and, and then we'll actually use Photoshop, and we'll put the covers together. And at, at the end of the, the session, those two authors will have will have Stuart Beige covers. So we need to think about um, finding some, some willing guinea pigs uh, for that, so we should probably have a think about that. In fact, if anyone is going to the conference and would like to um, uh, put themselves forward for that, it's probably not a bad uh, chance, bad opportunity to do that now. So if you email us at support at selfpublishingformula.com, and put the title guinea pig, um, then um, we, we can have a chat with Stuart and maybe pick out a couple of people to, um, to, to go forward for that. Catherine and John have no clue what those emails are going to be about when they no, come on they... the subtitle title <laughs> guinea pig. <laughs> they won't. Um, so yeah, that, that should be a fun one. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so the penultimate session on the first day um, is going to be um, Amazon Ads 101 with Janet Margot. Um, so Janet coming over, and you haven't met Janet either, have you? Um, I don't know if she exists. Yeah, she does. I've met her in Seattle. So Janet, as, as anyone who follows us will know, uh, does the uh, Amazon Ads uh, section of the Ads for Authors course. Um, and Janet worked, she was in, in charge of the books advertising team at Amazon um, for, I'm going to say, seven or eight years now. Um, is is not with them anymore, but she um, has a lot of well, tons and tons of extremely relevant knowledge and information as it pertains to running Amazon ads for books. And so, what Janet will do is she's going to go through a um, kind of the best practice, the kind of one hundred and one level uh, for Amazon ads, and that will be something that I think um, everyone can benefit from. Um, you especially, actually. And I should probably, this is a, a slight aside. I got an email the other day um, from someone who um, is a podcast listener and said it was given that we sell advertising courses and, we, you know, we, 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 we've never made, a, or you've never made a secret of the fact that you can get Facebook ads to work, but you can't get Amazon ads to work. And this, this author um, said... You probably shouldn't say that on the podcast because it yeah. makes you sound like you don't know what you're talking about. It, now, it's not like I haven't got them to work. Is that I have not put the graft in to mm. learn them. It should be noted that you are the author with success behind you, and I'm like the operations guy running the company. I'm gra I'm like one of your students, so I'm not. You know, you're the person who teaches people how to do ads. So yeah, I think and, it's and fair and that I say no, I'm on, absolutely. on that. No, no, yeah. we, we shouldn't. That we, we, well, we're not ever going to be dishonest about that. And, so that, and as you say, the fact is you haven't really tried Amazon ads properly yet. Now, and when it comes to can, I, can we get Amazon ads to work using what we teach? Yes, because that, that's what I do. Um, so, yeah. you know, Amazon ads work extremely well for me. Um, and 
and and as as, as we said um your focus has been on Facebook ads, which you have got to work very well in, in on just one book, which is is quite impressive. Um, so anyway, that that's that, that kind of aside. I, you know, it, it's a reasonable point that, that was made, but there's a very easy um, response to that. Anyway, the 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 Amazon Ads 101 session with Janet will be good. I mean, it'll be one that we can certainly, I think, we'll all take notes from. And then at the end of the day, uh, the the last session on the first day is going to be. Um, the Amazon, I've got it down as Amazon slot. So Amazon are the are the main sponsors for the show this year, and um, I spoke to um, several Amazonians at the London Book Fair, and they will be there. Um, so Darren is the head of KDP in the UK. Darren is a good friend, and Darren will be there. Um, and I have a feeling that his counterparts from France and Germany um, will be there as well, and with some others as well. We're going to try and get some from Audible, from ACX, from uh, um, KDP Print. Uh, a good selection of Amazonians for people to um, to meet and to get to know, and uh, that that, I mean, that can be extremely valuable um, to to get to have a have a, a name that you can um, refer to as necessary. Uh, yeah, as you, as you it's on. it's one of the most common questions that you and I will get on emails. Can do you have a secret contact at Amazon? Can you ask Amazon this? Can you? I had one this morning actually about somebody, and um, the answer is no. You know, we're simply not going to abuse the relationships that we have there. Uh, they're professional and it would quickly be the end of that relationship but here is an opportunity for you to be in the same room as the as senior amazonians and uh certainly at lbf at the london book fair darren is happy to talk to any authors about anything they've got and, and steer them mm. in the right direction so this is that opportunity yeah so they'll they'll all be there i think they'll probably be at the party as well on, on in the evening so again a good chance to to get to to know them so yeah, I mean, that's the end of the, the the first day. But then in in the foyer, which is as people who have been there before will know, is a very large space. Um, we're going to have uh, an evening party. Um, I don't I don't know from the top of my head what time it starts. I'm going to say like half six or seven o'clock. Seven thirty, I think. Seven thirty. Like yeah, yeah. Um, so two or three hours. Um, with we'll probably get a band again. Buster Birch, uh, who was uh, uh really provided some great entertainment on the boat last time. Um. And there'll be a bar and a chance to to meet us and to just hang out with with authors, which is, you know, that was one of the fun things last time on our floating petri dish on on the Thames, yeah. as we all wondered how many of us were going to go down with COVID. Um, but this time, yeah, no COVID this time, so we'll hopefully um, it'll be not so much of a worry this time. Um, but a good chance to kind of round the day off uh, with uh, with a drink or two and a chance to you know listen to some music and uh, have a chat with like minded authors and make connections fill your black book with with addresses of you know people if you're if you're writing in a particular genre it's a really good time to find other authors who write in that genre and maybe some you could work together in the future there's there's tons of things that you can come out of these kinds of events yeah that sounds like a really good day well done for working on this show i'm excited oh thank you very much um i'll do the second day then and see if i can uh um you know stick the landing as i say so um in the next day um so the what day is that? The 20, Thursday? 20, 29th. 29th. The Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday, know, yeah. Whatever it is, the 29th. Um, so we'll start with, um, uh, again, a, a, a sponsor is BookBub this year, and um, Wade Lucas and and AN one or two others from BookBub are coming over. And uh, Wade and colleagues will be, will be presenting on how to use BookBub ads to sell more books. Um, so another good session um, talking about... Um, I suspect that will be about the kind of the, the paid ads that you can get on the BookBub emails that we teach how to use in the in the ads course. Um, but again, it will be a good chance to talk to uh, the BookBub team about anything that BookBub does. So if, if you've got questions about their featured deals, um, it'll be a good chance to talk to them. And again, they'll be uh, they'll be in the conference both days. They'll probably be at the party, or well, they are they're sponsoring the party with Reedsy, so they'll be there in the evening. A good chance to chat to them about anything that you might want to find out um, about how BookBub works. So again, a, a really really good opportunity to, to meet someone very useful. Um, next is going to be an interview, um, probably with you, given that you and Lucy Score are good friends. So um, Lucy Score is, uh, again, uh, an Amazon number one dot com um, best-selling author, sold millions of books, uh, writes romance. Um, and um, I don't think we've ever seen Lucy do anything like this before. So this will be quite a, a, a good opportunity to get to know Lucy a little bit better. What are you going to talk to Lucy about, James? 
Yeah, um, well, I've got lots of things to talk to Lucy about. She won't know what's hit her when she's on that stage. Uh, no, she's, I mean, she's nervous about it, I think. Uh, but she she and Tim, her other half, Mr. Lucy, I think she's he's officially referred to, have become a very well-oiled machine in terms of production and marketing. And I think that's an important thing to explore, how you organize, how you scale for growth, how they cover everything the amount of work that goes into that um so there's a lot to explore and uh, it's about it's a kind of blueprint for success i think and and whilst yes she's mega huge now she's had she's also a bit like caroline suzanne she's had a brilliant last six months her her book things we never said i think mm-hmm. has, has really flown um but she started obviously like everyone did like you did mark quite small and um just had some initial success and then had to quickly build and scale up an organization around that. So I think that's what we'll focus on. Yeah. So that'd be a good one. Um, next session is uh, with Susie K. Sorry, Susie K. Quinn, um, who is um, one of the presenters. She does a course for us called uh, the um, uh, about bestselling, how to write a bestseller. Um, and Susie approaches um, that kind of thing, you know, quite a um, almost kind of an arse about face where you might say in the sense that she does her yeah. packaging. <clears throat> it's brilliant. Her... I, I absolutely love mm. Susie's methodology and teaching. I think it's absolutely it's spot very on. very sensible. Yeah. yeah very and commercial. It's, it, it's really, really important to understand that. Even if you want to adapt it and do it slightly differently, make, make sort of compromises about what you want to write out, you need to understand what she's talking about to understand how marketing, how, how, how people make decisions to buy books. Yeah. So yes, her session is going to be the five secrets of best-selling authors, which will be um, again another good one. Um, they'll be then uh, we've got kind of a, a empty slot which I haven't filled yet. And then there'll be lunch, and then after lunch we have um, uh, Rachel McLean, who is the uh, Kindle Storyteller Award this year, and she did a really really good webinar for us on um, multi-platform advertising. Um, how she uses Facebook ads, BookBub ads, and Amazon ads in conjunction, and, and and effectively and in quite a logical way. It was a really good webinar. One of the best ones, I th- actually I said to her at London Buffet, it's probably the best webinar we've ever yeah, ever given. It was very well attended um, and I thought it was excellent. So I, it was a pretty easy decision to get her to come back and present something similar um, uh, on the same lines as we did on that webinar. So uh, that will be a really good one. Um, following um, Rachel, we have um, Alex from Kalytics. Um, so coming over, I think Alex is in Switzerland at the moment. So um, he'll be over to talk about uh, 10 reasons why your book is missing the market and what to do about it. So uh, for those who don't know, Kalytics um, is um, Alex's business. And it is, he uses um, scraping technology to uh, scrape data from the public facing uh, Amazon pages, and then is able to manipulate that data to work out where there are niches that might be underserved but potentially profitable um he can he can look at uh, trends he sees in covers uh, in in uh, blurbs in reviews all kinds of things he has lots and lots of, of data um, and his reports on genre are always very interesting and definitely worth subscribing to but alex will be coming over to talk about that specifically why books might be missing the market and how you can fix those errors um so that will be uh a good one. I've seen Alex present a couple of times. He's really good. Um, yeah. And, uh, Loose of yeah, stuff. Lovely German accent, uh, which, which we like. Um, so yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark Recklau isn't uh, talking this year, but we will be representing no. with, a, with, a, with a, German, uh, a German accent, which we, we yeah, definitely like. So I, I, I played um, golf in Mallorca with three Swiss Germans, like Roger ah. Federer's Swiss German, because it's a multilingual country. And I hadn't realized that Yavol, which is like certain, I always thought it was like certainly... They used it as a kind of, you know, when somebody hit a good shot, yeah, full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so I'm going to start uh, using that now. Okay. <laughs> every, I'm going to shout it loudly during Alex's session. Uh, every quite. time he hits the nail on the head. He'll, with the, he'll love that. I'm sure yeah, he'll, he'll really enjoy that. Um, and then finally, the last session uh, is at the moment called Quitting the 9 to 5. And that is with... Um, some authors, I, I put out a call in the SPF community because I wanted to get something similar to the a session we had last time, which was really well regarded and, and enjoyed with um, five, uh, as it turned out, female authors who were making not kind of mega, mega money, not the seven figure or six figure authors, but you know some actually six figures and kind of mid to high five figures. So replacing what would be a standard salary with, a, with an equivalent salary made from books. Um, and that was... 
really great. We had um, Benedict Brown on the podcast saying that was his favourite um, mm. session and Benedict has gone on to, to have similar levels of success and actually will be on the... Actually, I better put him on the on my spreadsheet there because I left him off. Um, he'll be on the, on the panel as well. So five or six authors interviewed by you or me. Um, and just looking at what they've what they've done. So we've got at the moment we've got Gary Ross Jordan, Tracy Green, Benedict Brown. Actually, he was on the on the on there. Liz He's Hurley. On there twice. Uh, Liz not, Hurley. Yeah, not that one. Um, and Meg Jolly, um, who are all doing really well. Um, yeah. Not life changing. Oh yeah, it is life changing because the, they're is. not having to work for the it's, man anymore. It's they can the work biggest for life change, I think. I mean, when you get to Lucy scored Caroline Suzanne level, okay, so you, I don't know what that means, business class travel or whatever. You know, it it's it's a scale up. The big change for me fundamentally is is not having to work for the man. You know, to put it yeah. in old fashioned terms, is not have to yeah. schlep into a, a job every day that you don't particularly inspire inspire you. So it's fundamental. And I also think it's important because you know I mentioned Lucy. And I'm going to interview her. I should just say that her book is called uh, Things We Never Got Over, released in January and is currently number 10 in the dot-com store. I mean, that she's had a phenomenal year. Yeah. And there is something that happens, and it's, it's annoying. I hear it from time to time. Actually, people have said it about me recently as well. When I published my figures uh, of my first year, they say, oh, yeah, but the reason you're successful is... And then they fill in that space with something that doesn't apply to them. So that's why they can't be successful. So in my case, I said, because you've got a podcast, James, that's why you've Which been able to mate, be if successful. If they thought about it, we'd realise it was just complete that nonsense. It is nonsense. There aren't many military aviation fans well, on this exactly. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> a, I do meet them. There's a few, but yeah. they're very few and far between. Um, and in the case of Lucy, they'll always think, well, yeah, but she's a mega star and, and you are Mark. So that, that's unobtainable to me. It's nonsense because they've all started. All of you have started. Yeah. And what you're doing today is not fundamentally different from what you did to get yourself to that point. So it's really important listening to people who've been very successful. And most people are like that. But that's why I think this session is important. Well, it's the, and it's, yeah, it's because it doesn't feel like it's, it's a massive step. It's not out of reach. Um, so, yeah, these are people who maybe are six months ahead of where some of the audience will be um, and i want that's why i'd like to close with this because i want people to leave like we did last time um i want people to leave feeling that it is achievable uh, it is it is possible to it's very possible to uh, stop working for somebody else and to do something that you know anyone listens to this podcast there's a very good chance that we've wanted to support ourselves make a job um out of writing stuff non-fiction fiction kids books whatever it might be um for for years since we were kids i know that was certainly always my dream and i want people to leave um feeling that it is possible it's possible so i don't i think ending with lucy for example who, as we say is a, is a seven figure author now um although inspirational might may not feel attainable um and i, I want people to, to leave the south bank center on the Wednesday after having two really great days with other authors and having a really excellent time learning loads but wanting to leave and go back to their desk on the, the on the 30th feeling that um, it is possible and has never been more possible to replace a traditional income with an income made from writing books yeah absolutely and uh, and I think you said this last time you said there'll be somebody in the audience at it is. this conference who will mm. be on the stage at the oh, next conference? Benedict Brown. Um, Benedict Brown. So th there's, there's at least one, and, and possibly there'll be another. Well, actually, Rachel McLean, I think as well, I yeah. uh, was in that situation too. So, uh, as absolutely, I'm very confident that there will be people um, in the audience who are just getting started. Maybe they've got a book or a couple of books, and um, yeah, when we do it again next year, they'll be they'll be on yeah. stage. You know, and that, we'll, that could be you. It could be you. Yeah, exactly. Um, good. Can't be you. It won't be you. It won't be me. It might be me. You're on stage anyway. Second book might. Yes, yeah, that's true. Um, the uh, conference environs, as I say, are very uh, social friendly. There's restaurants, all sort of chains and some independents. So South Bank's actually a really good place. They usually have street food as well uh, along the way there. Um, we do have a Facebook group set up. I think it'd be quite useful in the next few weeks for you to, if you're going to the conference, to start getting involved in that Facebook group, find similarly like-minded people you can meet up with and go out for a meal uh, with in the evening and, and lunch and hook up with. Hook up with is a different connotation with the American uh, sense, but uh, you know what I mean. So make the most of those opportunities to make contacts uh, and buddies that can significantly help your career and you can help each other. Um, 
Uh, and a final word, I think we have, uh, there's been a bit of talk in conference world generally and in self-publishing about the behavior levels expected of people. We do have done some work in that front and that sense. So uh, we want it to be a comfortable and safe area for everyone at the conference. And you'll find some things in place when you get to the conference just to help that um, and mitigate any problems that we might have. Uh, hopefully we won't. We didn't have any problems last time, but um, uh, we are responding to that and making changes. Okay, so that's our conference, Mark, which is very exciting, and a snip at one hundred and forty-nine pounds uh, for the uh, the two days. Actually, that includes the parties. One hundred and twenty pounds uh, for it's the actually, two days. I, I've, I've seen. I'm not. I have seen some other conferences. <clears throat> I'll say, well, the events or things that are much more expensive than that. And I, you know, and that's not. I'm not going to cast any expressions on anybody, but I think that's pretty. Um, that's a pretty punchy price. Well, um, it's a really good price. It's I mean, a really it, good price. And we, we, you know, we we are not. We we will probably lose money on this. So we'll be around about yeah. break even if we're lucky. So this isn't a, something that we're doing to make to retire onto um, you know some kind of Spanish beach. Although oh, probably not Spain for you. We won't go into that. But um, right. yeah, probably not going to be something like that. But it is just something we, we want to do. We obviously we don't want to lose money, but even if we lose a little bit, that's fine. We'll swallow it because I think it is something that is going to be a really fun thing for us. Yeah, and and worthwhile and fun for everybody. So, um, yeah, it's, I think it's it's really good value. All right, and LBF had a a one day symposium for authors before London Book Fair, and it was at six hundred and fifty quid. Was it? Oh my god! Yeah, it was really expensive, and they very often are. These I saw someone. Yeah. Do, it was a completely unrelated area. I can't remember. It was about learning real estate or something. It was twelve hundred dollars over advertising yeah, doing a the seminar for the day. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, we we've priced it at a point where. Hopefully, we're not going to lose too much money, and we might even break even. So that's you know that's what we're hoping for. Uh, but yes, that reminds me. Um, yes. So if you can't be there in person, um, what we did last time, and we're going to do it again, is we will sell virtual tickets. Um, and we we're still kind of working on. We should probably talk about this off air, yes. James. Make well, sure no, we it won't. Doing. I can tell you exactly what this is. It's not. It won't be live streamed. We've decided no. against live streaming. Um, we just don't think it's the right aesthetic. What we want to do is to present you with almost like an online course afterwards with professionally filmed, really good sound and vision uh, sessions broken up so you can watch them in your own time. So it'd be like a package uh, which mm. you can buy. It's going to be, I think we're going to price it at 25 quid. We're going to price it as cheaply as we can. We've got to obviously pay for the production, which is quite expensive and multiple camera and mi microphone production on top of the AV that goes on in the conference hall anyway. Um, but we will announce that um, in the next few weeks. And yeah, I would buy your ticket for that um, because you will then, if you can't come to the conference, or even if you have come to the conference, actually, you might want to watch it again. Um, we're definitely going to put some effort into that. It'd be a really good package. Yeah, it was really good. It was very slick last time. So it looked really good. It sounded good. You know, it was, it was definitely a valuable little add-on uh, last time. So we, we'll do that again because obviously not everyone... Is going to be able to come, um, and we've got lots of American friends coming over, some some Kiwis and Aussies as well coming over. But not everyone can jump on a plane um, in June. Also, I got some. There's a reasonable point, I suppose. I got. I seen some comments on the Facebook um, ads that we've been running on on this with uh, someone having a go, saying, "Why why are you doing it in a, in a weekday? Why not do it at the weekend?" And I'm like, "Well, the weekend is probably more expensive. Might not even be possible at the South Bank Centre, no. and and probably you know, just a number of reasons why we wouldn't." But then she said. I'm a teacher. I can't get time off, so which is you know fair enough. Um, so that's that's when the live ticket comes in. If yes. you can't take holiday, you can't get over. Then, yeah. then the the uh, the live not the live ticket the um, the video um, package is is where that that is comes. frustrating. And teaching is is one of those. I mean, yeah. people have jobs where they might be able to not get the flexibility they need. But teaching is a yeah. job. I know that you have to be there during the and your your holiday sort of bunched yeah. up. Yeah. Forced on so, that is unfortunate, uh, but you're right. The venue, I mean, we, you know, the discussions about venue, Mark, which went backwards and forwards for a long time, and which we, you know, you look initially at all these spaces in London that would be suitable, and you end up with Hobson's choice because very few of them are available. Very few of them are available two days in succession, and some of the ones that are available are thirty five grand for food before you've even started to pay for the, yeah. you know, they're just out of scope for us. Fine if you're Price Forbes or someone, um, or Price Waterhouse or someone, but not for us. Um, but our first choice is the choice we've ended up at because we wanted mm. to go back to the Queen Elizabeth Hall. We were just looking at potentially 
a different type of venue, different atmosphere, but I'm pleased we've, we've got the QEH uh, and they've pretty much dictated our dates because they are inundated with reorganization stuff and two years of cancelled concerts and that yeah. go on in that venue. So, yeah. 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 So that, 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 that's how it has to be. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, it was, it was great last time. We had a really good time. Um, it was, you know, very, very smoothly organized, which was, you know, I was going to say more luck than judgment, but people like Catherine and the volunteers played a blinder last time. So, yeah. um, you know, hopefully I've, well, I've got no reason to suspect it won't be any different. So, um, it'll be good, you know, really good, to, good opportunity. We know a bit more about how these things run because we've done one before. So, um, I'm pretty confident that it will be, um, it will go well. And I'm very confident that the speakers we've talked about the, uh, on the podcast today will all be excellent. Um, and there's some, it's quite fun for me because I, I can basically book people that I want to listen to. Um, and so there are some people on that list that I will be very interested to hear what they have to say. Um, and hopefully if I feel that way, then others will too. Hmm. So Scott Altman, the F-14 pilot who flew the original Top Gun stunts and then Wait. went to space he's as actually, an astronaut. Is he, can I no, book he's, him? he's doing a flyover and you're jumping out of his plane and on a parachute. That's is, how he, gonna... uh, is he going to buzz the tower? Yeah, potentially well, I think, Maverick. I think the pattern is um, full. Um, okay, let's brief, let's wrap up here, but let's talk about um, the other conferences that we'll go to this year. If you can't make our conference and you do want the conference experience, the ones we've tended to go to in the past are the two two regulars for us are 20 books, Vegas and Nink. They're very different, actually, very different feel um, and very different purpose. So 20 books is, is more of um, uh, an open conference for anybody invested in interested in self-publishing so if you haven't written a book yet it's definitely a place to go and start talking to people and start getting hints and, and tips and, and solid advice on which direction you should be taken both with writing and with uh, marketing you'll have a myriad of choices every day there's like three or four choices of, of every hour every session three or four choices of different places to go and listen to including a big hall and of course in the evening you get an opportunity to buddy up with people and and, and make some of those very valuable uh, friendships nink is a bit more specialized uh, there is an entry requirement for nink uh, i think you have to prove that you make five or six thousand dollars a year something like that so you're already established you know you're already producing books that are being bought by somebody and for that reason the level of detail is a bit higher. Now, I should say, I think Nink has sold out uh, for this year. Um, and you do have to be a member to go to the conference. So that is a bit more prohibitive, but maybe one for next year if you're not going this year. Maybe you can go to 20 books this year and be qualifying uh, to get to Nink for next year. Uh, 20 books obviously is in Vegas um, in November. It's quite nice uh, weather, but it is Vegas. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, Nink, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't love going to Nink because it's on the beach in uh, in Florida on the Gulf Coast. It's beautiful. It's warm. Uh, uh, it's a nice time of year to be in, in Florida. It can be a bit oppressive in the summer. It's a lovely time of year. And you and I have both, I think, run along the beach, haven't we, and had a swim in the sea. And, yeah, it's uh, lovely. It's a yeah. really nice, relaxing time. And, and I've got, I think, you know, we both have here friends who will be, Good friends. I mean, Lucy Score is one for the rest of my life who I've met at Nink um, and uh, Cecilia and others. So, so yeah. Yeah. So, uh, now the other conference, there are, there are plenty of other conferences. Actually, I'm going to Madrid uh, in a couple of weeks presenting on TikTok there. Um, that is 20 back books. To Spain. Going back to Spain, I can't believe it. Yeah, so what we haven't said, a little discussion before, is I had a bit of an issue at the airport where somebody took against me for reasons I'm not sure about, and it was quite traumatic for me, but I'm over it. I was able to <laughs> rant, but I do have to now go back to Spain. Thankfully, a different airport. Yes. Um, I so heard he's back. been transferred. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. They sacked him and moved him to Madrid. <laughs> yeah, he get lost in Madrid. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be smaller. Yeah. I think Caroline and Suzanne are going to be there. Or Caroline definitely is going to be there. Um, and there'll be a few other people presenting on these um, important uh, I might topics. go. We'll have to see. And um, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm basically owed because I'm, if, if Lucy's listening to the podcast today. But Lucy is at Badminton <laughs> Horse Trials for four days, leaving me with two kids two refugees um a dog and um and 15 builders in the barn so i am kind of i am pretty stressed at the moment yeah in, in a good way it's not not a problem but i think basically i am owed a weekend away somewhere so um yes well, well that would we'll be great see. come along for the weekend and uh, i'll find a nice golf course for us on the monday oh god yeah i haven't played for a while I'm t terrible at the moment but yes um we'll see it sounds quite nice 
Um, yeah, we'll see. Good. Last um, minute. Final thing I want to say is that I know lots of authors, uh, some of us are, you know, enjoy this social occasions, although I'm more introverted than you might think, but some authors are very introverted. Mm. Um, but because of that, it kind of solves itself that problem because you'll be standing in a large room with lots of people and a surprising number of whom are uncomfortable in that environment. And that in itself becomes quite a bonding thing. This is not like you're going to go to like the real estate uh, conference where you know you're going to get these air punching, you know, guys no, and no, girls. It's not like that. It, it doesn't not like that. feel and, like that. And also, it's not. I think it's with introverts. It's not so much necessarily because I I feel this way too. I don't think it's always about being in a room with lots of people and high energy and all that. It's often kind of worrying about small talk and mm. what do you say to people you've never met before. I I feel I'm better than, than I used to be, but when I remember not that long ago, I used to hate that. Um, going to conferences, I would quite happily just stand in the corner and have a drink by myself and not talk to anybody. Um, so one of the things I think is happening this year is uh, an, an author, and I'm, I'm, forgive me, name eludes me now, um, but I think he has blue hair. Um, yes, I know you um, He is, he asked, could he have a table in the foyer where he, he would have like kind of an introvert's area? So in, introverts can go and if you want to, um, kind of just meet other people who are similarly nervous about the prospect of, of you know, small talking with people they never never met before. So we will we'll definitely make that possible. The the other thing is it's quite a big venue. Um so there will be there's lots of space and we actually have another theatre, second theatre that we're probably not going to be using. So there might even be like a kind of a chill out space where you can just go and sit down quietly um and recharge. I'm quite decided what we're going to do with that yet, but there will be the opportunity for that. And and also if you just want to go for a leave and go for a walk on the South Bank on the Thames by yourself um, or with someone else, that, that's fine too. And it's, it is in a really good part of London with, you know, lots of, you know, the South Bank is lovely. And if it's a nice summer day, walking down by the Thames, it's quite a nice thing to do. So, yeah. um, you know, th there will be, we are aware of that um, because, you know, we we share some of those um, traits ourselves. So we will definitely be, be on top of that. People don't believe it about us, but uh, you'll mm. be surprised. Um, Good. Okay, look, coming towards the end of our, our time discussing our conference and others, thank you very much indeed, Mark, for your work on the schedule. We should say Catherine um, Matthews has sort of taken the helm this year from me um, and is on top of things. I think she and John are going back to the venue next week to do some more, um, make some more decisions about stuff. Uh, you can imagine, you probably don't need me to tell you that there's a huge amount of work goes into putting on a conference like this. Mm. And uh, we're very grateful for the work going on in the background. Hopefully. It'll all be good. And yep. uh, the sun will shine in June, um, just as a week before Wimbledon, I think. Might even be during Wimbledon. 28th, 29th, probably is during Wimbledon, I think. Yeah, it is, because remember, John had an issue with having yes. tickets, didn't he? I think he did. I think he's got tickets for the Wednesday, but he's not going. Um, yeah, so it'll be a lovely, uh, lovely time to be in London, and we cannot wait to see you. Uh, so if you haven't got your tickets, there is still a chance. Um selfpublishingformula.com forward slash SPS live. That's Mark. Is that for this week? Thank you very much indeed um, for the eagle eyed on here. You'll notice that next week's presentation, we're wearing the same clothes because we're about to record it because we need to do a little bit of batching. I'm professional. I'm going to go and change my change yeah. new t-shirt. Just, just take your shirt off. Could do. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, yes, yeah, that time of year, YouTube, YouTube views will be significantly down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next next week, horrified, will run away from it. Uh, yes, and on that bombshell, thank you very much indeed. All that remains for me to say is it a goodbye from him and a goodbye from me. Goodbye, goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing. So get your words into the world and join the revolution with the self-publishing show.